Weet je, ze la. everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my October wrap-up for 2021 part 2. I read a total of 15 books this month, so this is the final wrap-up for this month. If you're interested in the first couple of books I read, that will be linked down below. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I read is All These Bodies by Kendar Blake, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book takes place in 1958, where a string of murders baffles the police when the bodies are drained of blood, but no blood is left on the crime scenes. Then there is a breakthrough on the case when 15-year-old Marie Catherine Hale is found at the Carlson's farmhouse, drenched head to toe in their blood. Michael Jensen is the son of the local sheriff and he dreams of becoming a journalist so when Marie Catherine says that she will only retell her story to him he jumps on the chance to hear her confession as Michael listens to her story, he must report back to the district attorney or risk sentencing Marie Catherine to the death penalty. I'm a huge fan of true crime, so I was pretty excited to pick this one up. I think that the setting of the small town made the story a lot more eerie. This is definitely more of a slow burn thriller, so if you're looking for something that you're going to be turning the pages for because it's fast paced, this is definitely not it. But I really loved how morally grave Mary Catherine Catherine was and how we heard her story very slowly. It was really difficult to tell what was real and what was made up in her story. I think that she's a character that you never really know if she is a murderer or a victim. I definitely had a lot of fun trying to figure that out, but I do think that the ending was a bit lacking, which resulted in my lower rating. So I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It Next up, I read... The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Nobody should be surprised. This is like a booktube darling. This follows an unknown journalist named Monique Grant who receives notice from her employer that the famous starlight Evelyn Hugo is requesting her and only her to write a story about her, and nobody is more surprised than Monique. So Monique is brought to Evelyn's Upper East Side apartment where she listens to Evelyn recount her life and the seven husbands that she ultimately married, but none of these men compare to Evelyn's one true love, her wife. I waited so long to read this book because I was terrified that I was going to be the only person on booktube who did not fall in love with this book. I have never been more wrong in my life. I was instantly hooked on this woman and her life and all that she's encountered. I was so invested in this woman and the story that she was telling, I could not stop flipping the pages. I really loved how we got some insight of actual events in queer history. I really liked the two different timelines. We got the past when Evelyn was recounting all her time with her husbands, as well as the present where Evelyn was telling the story to Monique. I think that it was a really interesting way to learn more about Evelyn and her past and I really liked how the chapters were all split into the seven husbands names. I thought that was really unique. I actually listened to this on audio and I think that the narrator did such an incredible job with both Evelyn and Monique's voices. I just loved the found family aspect in this book. It made me so happy and giddy. I could not put this book down just because I loved these characters so much. I just think that these characters are so multi-layered and complex. There was not one character that I didn't feel like was a real person. I adored Evelyn. I think that she is such a strong character. I was instantly enamored with her, which is the point. She is just not a good person, but she is fully aware of this fact. She will do anything in her power to get to the top, no matter who she's going to hurt. She is just so unapologetically herself. I also loved watching Monique grow as the story progressed and come into herself. I loved watching her learn to stand up for herself as she spent more time with Evelyn. I also loved trying to figure out why Evelyn had chosen Monique for the story. I'm also a big fan of the underlying 
underlying message of life is too short and you need to love who you love and be who you are. If you have not read this book, I beg of you, please read it. Don't be like me and wait a thousand years. It is so worth it. Rarely does a book make me cry, but this one had me sobbing. I just love these incredible women so much. Y'all need to read it. Five out of five stars. Next up, I have a Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. I gave this a four out of five stars. This book follows Andromeda, who is a dentera, which means that she is hired by people to rid their spaces of the evil eye. Andromeda was raised by a man named Jember, who is one of the most well-known Debtaras in the world. He is one of the best, but also one of the harshest. So she learned at a very young age that she needed to toughen up in order to survive. And now at the age of 19, she has left Jember and she is living on the streets by herself. She is hired by a wealthy heir named Magnus Rochester to rid his estate of the evil eye. As she spends more time in the house, she quickly realizes that there is much more to Magnus Rochester than she suspected, and this job may be a bit more than she bargained for. This is a Ethiopian-inspired, loose retelling of Jane Eyre. I thought it was really spooky and eerie. I think that the house and the manifestations that, that came from that house were terrifying, and as soon as the walls started bleeding, I would have been out of there. She's got a lot more balls than I do. I really liked Andy as a main character. I thought she was very resilient and very fierce. She stood up for those she cared about. I think learning about her backstory was the most interesting part of this book. Her relationship with Jember was so complex. She saw him as a father figure and was was so desperate for his love and approval and she just never got it no matter what she did. It honestly broke my heart to watch her try so desperately to make him love her and he just turned his back on her every chance he got. Magnus was an intriguing character. He was very charming, I will give him that, but he was a bit of a brat and very entitled which could get annoying at times. There is definitely a case of insta-love between Andy and Magnus which if that's not your thing, maybe don't pick up this book. I'm not a big fan of it, but in this case it wasn't that bad. I think because their banter was so much fun to read that I didn't really mind it that much. There isn't much world building in this, but the magic system was really interesting, although a bit confusing at times. I listened to this on audio and I think that the narrator did a really great job getting that spooky atmosphere and vibe into the story. It's definitely a great Halloween spooky season read, so maybe next October pick it up. I mean, it's still kind of spooky season, so pick it up now. Gave it a four out of five stars. I enjoyed it. Next up is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows Artemisia, who is training to be a gray sister, which means that she cleanses the body of the soul before they head off to the afterlife. If this is not done, the soul will return to the land of the living, very ravenous and hungry. When Artemisia was younger, she was possessed by a, one of these spirits, and and so she prefers to live her life in solitude away from others who question her past. One evening, her convent is attacked by a group of possessed soldiers, and in order to save her people, she must make a deal with a revenant who is an ancient spirit chained to a saint's relic. The only way to purge a revenant is to seek help from a Vespertine, but all knowledge of the Vespertines were wiped from the world many years ago, so Artemisia turns to the Revenant himself to find more information. I read The Sorcery of Thorns a couple of months ago, and I really liked that book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I definitely liked this a lot less than that, but it was still enjoyable as I read it. This is definitely more of a slow burn fantasy than I typically like. I think that Artemisia was an interesting character. I really liked learning more about her backstory. 
I think that the exploration of her trauma was really well done and I think that Margaret Rogerson did a really great job of having her character develop as the story progressed. I really liked watching her grow and realize that she is worthy of friendship and happiness. It was really nice to see. The banter between Artemisia and the Revenant was by far my favorite part of this book. I definitely was not expecting him to be as sassy and snarky as he was. He was everything I love in a character so I was here for it. I also really loved watching how much they grew to care for one another but like would not admit it. It was so much fun. I also really liked how there was no romance in this book. I think that if there were to have been a romance, it definitely would have detracted from the overall vibe of the story. I think that my biggest complaint for this book was the magic system. It was very layered and complex, and I'm not 100% sure if it actually was layered and complex or if I just could not keep everything straight in my little tiny pea brain. So it could just be a me thing. Definitely read it and decide for yourself, but 3.5 five stars. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Next up is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I gave this four out of five stars. This follows Justice McAllister who is a young black teenager. He is top of his class and destined for an Ivy League school. He is constantly battling stereotypes from his peers and his community based on the color of his skin so he turns to the workings of Martin Luther King Jr. One day he is riding in the passenger seat of his best friend Manny's car with the music blasting, which grabs the attention of an off-duty cop. An argument ensues and shots are fired, which causes both Manny and Justice to be under media scrutiny. I think that this is such an important and brutally honest book. It covers a lot of topics, not just racism and police brutality. I really enjoyed both the storyline and Justice's character. I think although the storyline was very predictable and where it was going, it was done in a very impactful way. I actually read this in one sitting because I was so engrossed in the story. I think that every single character in this felt like a real person with real personalities and problems. I really liked how the letters that Justice wrote to Dr. Martin were incorporated into this book. I think that it was a really great way to see Justice's unfiltered thoughts. I think it was a great addition to the overall feel of this book. I am definitely intrigued with where the story is going to go and I'm hoping to pick up Dear Justice very shortly. Next up is Reprieve by James Hahn Matson, and I gave this a four out of five stars. This takes place in 1997 where four contestants make it to the final cell of the Quigley House, which is a full contact escape room in Lincoln, Nebraska. If they are able to make it through all the horrors that await them without any of the team members calling the safe word reprieve, they will win a large cash prize. This has only been completed one other time in Quigley House history, but before they are able to make it through the final challenge, a man breaks into the final cell and ends up killing one of the contestants in cold blood. Told through flashbacks, and court transcripts, the people who were there on the night of the murder lend their viewpoints on what happened that night. Okay, so I have a vlog where I rave about this book, but if anybody does not know what Mikami Manor is, stop this video, go Google it right now, and then come back. This book is literally Mikami Manor in book form. I loved the overall spooky feeling while reading this book. I did think that it was going to be a five-star read, but it did ultimately fall a little bit short for me in the end. This is definitely more of a slow burn thriller. So again, if you are looking for a fast-paced thriller, this ain't it. Move along. This is a lot more complex than I originally thought it was going to be. There is a lot of social commentary on things like manipulation, greed, racism, sexism. I don't think that any of these characters were likable so it made it very hard to connect with them which I think is one of my biggest complaints of the book. I think my biggest biggest complaint though would be that I wish there was more time spent actually inside Quigley House. A lot of the story was flashbacks from before the murder and it would have been a lot more fun to actually be inside the house because the chapters where we were inside the house were probably my favorite part of the book. The book is marketed as a horror novel and I do think that the time spent in 
inside the actual house would qualify as a horror genre, but everything else just was not horror. It was more social commentary. So definitely my biggest problem with it because I was expecting something else and got something completely different, but I still liked it as I read it. So four out of five stars. And then the final book that I have is Master of One. This is by Jada Jones and Danielle Bennett. I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows Rags, who is a thief. He is caught during his last mission and he is offered a proposition by an evil sorcerer in the Queen's Guard. He must find an ancient fey relic or face the consequences. He never expected the relic to be an actual fey prince named Shining Talon and so together they set off on a quest to find the rest of the relics that may save the world. So this book was actually a lot of fun but it was so long it dragged on after a while. I became a little bit bored because it was very repetitive at times. This is another one. If you are looking for a fast-paced book, this is not it. It is a very slow. It is a journey to read. It doesn't get fast-paced until about the last 100 pages, and I believe that this is like 599 pages or something ridiculous. I lied. It's 531, but still, like the last maybe 100 pages are where the action actually takes place. This is told in multiple point of view. My favorite definitely being Rags. He is such a little shit, always trying to stir the pot, and I loved every second of it. There are a lot of characters to keep track of, which can be a bit difficult. You do end up getting a total of six point of views in the end, but the concept of the overall story was really interesting, and I really liked how finding the next person in line depended solely on the person before them. I will admit I was a bit confused about why all of these people people needed to come together, something about a queen and the rebellion, but we never really got much information on that. I just wish there was a bit more development on that aspect of the story because I was left pretty confused. Another like itty bitty complaint that I have about this book was the amount of swearing and if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that I have a trucker mouth so the fact that I found the swearing to be a lot says something when it's like every other paragraph has like eight swear words in it, it gets very distracting very, very quickly and it just becomes choppy. So that was a little bit annoying. But other than that, 3.5 out of 5 stars. I had a good time, although I am still very confused. All right, everybody. So those were our, all the books that I read in the month of October 2021. This is part two of two. So if you're interested in the first couple of books I read, I will leave that down below for you guys to check out. Let me know if you read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!